all of you standing there today are eaters. So everybody eats, everybody needs to eat, everybody enjoys eating in, in most cases. And so the exhibition that you see today is full of artworks by some amazing artists all over the world who are really exploring that idea of what it means to be an eater and an eater as an agent of selection, as somebody who really shapes what's happening from what is sown in our fields to what eventually ends up on your dinner plates. We're here at opening night of Edible. People are bouncing through the bouncy stomach, being digested. We've just finished a course of vegan ortolan. We're about to play some kimchi quesadilla. It's a pretty exciting night, and uh, so far the public loves it. We thought it was really good fun. There was like loads of bacteria on the ground and loads of big balloon things. <laughs> the idea is that when you come into here, you're uh, part of the meal, really. This is the stomach. But what we're really interested in is the interaction between people in the space. So it's not about just a visual artwork, but actually a work that uh, activates people to interact with each other. So the food lab here in Edible is all about looking at um, food from the angle of digestion um, to gustation, which is all about taste, to also then nutrition and sort of uh, food chemistry. So there's a whole different range of tests that people can come and do and try out, and some taste perception tests. The design of the whole show works really well in terms of the different food stalls. It was almost like a future food market. Yeah, it's really cool when you're at an exhibition where you can actually eat the, uh, the exhibit. The exhibit, you know. So the vegan ortolan is essentially a simulation of one of the cruelest dishes in the world. It's a traditional French dish where they catch a small bunting bird. Their eyes are gouged out and it's force fed and it gets drowned in ammonia. I can taste the crunch of what's supposed to be the bones. So you put the sheet over your head to hide your shame from God and to keep the flavors in. So that's how we're serving this dish now. I've actually been uh, working on recipes for about two months and I brought a lot of ingredients from the United States. I had to get special letters to clear customs, so that was a challenge. You can book in for feeding times for the next eight weeks of the show, so make sure you put your name down because the meals that Heather has prepared and devised with Kat and Zach are absolutely amazing. Todd's Mitchum Peppermint is actually the most uh, ubiquitous radiation bread plant on the planet Earth. And hopefully after they watch the video and they read about it, they're a little bit more conscious of where even seemingly innocuous plants like peppermint actually come from and how they're produced. Basically it's a sound installation. The concept is to demater dematerialize the work of the yeast, changing the sugars into ethanol and CO2. Fantastic. That was delicious. It really was amazing. It actually had the feeling of eating a bird inside this little, I don't know, morsel of food. It's very interesting. I think it's great to have science, art, food all together. It's a great idea. And I really hope you enjoy the show and get to taste uh, something along the way and rethink what you eat every day. <laughs>